हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू लर्निंग पाइथन टूडे विल स्टार्ट विद स्टेटिक्स सी मेनी टाइम्स वाट हैपन्स आदर वी डोंट हैव सफिशियंट डाटा और वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द फिजिकल प्रोसेस बिहाइंड इट सो एट द टाइम स्टेटिक्स माइट बी वेरी हेल्पफुल लेट से यू लुक एट यू नो हाउ वी डू ए टॉस वेदर हेड विल कम और टेल विल कम ऑफकोर्स देर इज ए फिजिकल लॉस वर्क यू नो गवर्निंग ऑन इट हाउ द डिफरेंट फोर्सेज आर एक्टिंग ऑन इट and if you have precise uh, measurement of everything you can figure out whether head will come or tail will come but it becomes very complicated so many time you know we can just throw a toss and figure out how many times heads are coming and tail come are coming and then figure out what is the you know uh, uh, probability of head coming or tail coming and we can use a coin many time for simplicity we assume the probability is you know 50% for head 50% for tail दो इट मे नॉट बी रियलिटी द कॉइन मे बी बायस्ड फॉर समथिंग सो ऑल सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स वी कैन यू नो सोल्व विद द हेल्प ऑफ स्टेटिक्स ऑफकोर्स इट्स आई डो नो काइंड ऑफ ए मॉडलिंग काइंड ऑफ एजम्पन्स वी आर मेकिंग इन रियलिटी इट इज नॉट टू बी ट्रू बट द क्रिटिकल थिंग इज आर वी एबल टू सोल्व अवर प्रॉब्लम और नॉट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद इम्पेरिकल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फर्स्ट लेट्स ओपन अवर लेट्स ओपन अवर बुक इन द कोलैब फर्स्ट विल सी वैन वी टाक अबाउट स्टेटिक्स वी टाक अबाउट प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन वी टाक अबाउट क्यूमलेटिव डेंसिटी फंक्शन और सी डी एफ और पी डी एफ बट वी हैव सिंपल डाटा सो वाट इज द कनेक्शन बिटवीन ए नॉर्मल डाटा लेट से वी हैव ए हंड्रेड मेजरमेंट और फिफ्टी मेजरमेंट एन दी पी डी एफ एंड सी डी एफ सो विल स्लोली गो फ्रॉम द डाटा एंड सी हाउ वी कैन यू नो नोमरिकली फिगर आउट द पी डी एफ एंड सी डी एफ सो वी आर जनरेटिंग सम हंड्रेड Uh, you know synthetic data we are generating if you want you can print and you can see it then we are computing the histogram and you can see we are getting the n and b jesses let's you know print it to figure out what we are getting here so we are getting number of bin in each category so in the first category we have 1 in the second category we have 0 then we have 6 11 8 like this okay then we are getting the edge of the bin so you know one edge is minus 3 minus 2.66 like this we are getting it so we can compute the uh, center of the bin so we can take you know we can take uh, this array with one uh, what should i say uh, you know like we do the uh, auto correlation so similarly we can compute the average of it so we are taking the bin as from the first till the we are dropping the last entry and second we are taking from here till the end so we take the average so we are computing the mean of this and this mean of this and this mean of this and this you can compute in this way or you can simply use this formula so you get the bin center if you want you know we can quickly check it and so our first value is minus 2.6 and minus 2.4 14 so if we take of mean of this this is going to between these two value this is what you can see so similarly between this and this this is the mean and of course this mean uh, array or vector will have one element less compared to the previous one so we are computing center of the bin and we are we have seen you know the we are getting the uh, number in each bin now let's plot it so here we are taking the center of each bin and we are plotting how many uh, you know element we had in different bin we are defining the width of each bin typically we take a width you know where uh, it should not overlap by default value is 0.8 and you can reduce it or you can increase it like in the case when we are plotting the hourly rainfall we increase up to 1 you can choose any color you know just to show you uh, color parameter we can define so you can see this is a simple histo uh, histogram and why we start with the histogram if you take any variable let's say uh, rainfall the way we measure rainfall is you know it becomes discrete variable you may have rainfall let's say your uh, the least you can measure uh, measure it let's say 0.5 mm so you will have always data like in the way you know 0 mm 0.5 mm 1 mm 1.5 mm 2 mm and so on 
so this becomes a discrete data but in reality we know the data is continuous rainfall can be 1.5 you know it, it can take any value so we can make the bin so we can say rainfall between let's say 0 and 1 1 and 2 2 and 3 so this is a way to convert our data into continuous data so whenever we fit continuous variable we typically make the bin and then we can you know work with it so you can see this graph you can read more about it you know so we can compute so this is the frequency we can say in each bin we have now we'll compute the relative frequency so relative frequency means in each bin we have let's say 25 20 15 bin we can divide the total number of size that is the 100 so we are dividing it now you can see we are getting the same curve 25 divided by 100 so the shape is similar but this value on y axis are different so first we compute a histogram then we convert into relative histogram just to show you different color i am using different color and you know putting different font size so now we have got the uh, our relative frequency now how do we convert relative frequency into pdf <coughs> see what happens <coughs> what is pdf if we want to know let's say between two range you know if you read the definition of pdm pdf let's say between one and two and you want to know how many times some variable will come between one and two in a relative sense so this is the integration over this range we are doing it other way so what we do we take the relative frequency and if we define the divide by dx or delta x you know because this is discrete delta x in our case size of the bin so we take the relative frequency we divide by the sign of bin you know size of uh, each bin and if we look at this is what the pdf is so this is a very simple way see whatever happens i know you know many people who knows uh, the equation of pdf and cdf for different distribution but the main idea is you should have you know filling of the system filling comes if you can get understanding how your data behaves how what is the connection between a data and the pdf then only you can make use of you know many things you get out of pdf and cdf so this is a way you can convert one data you know we have some uh, array in, into the pdf now what is the we could have done the same thing with the help of density function so the idea was to show you, you know how the computation works we can use density you will see but you will never get to know how the densities are being computed and when you change the bin size how it will impact when you reduce the bin size how it will impact all these things you can figure out happened. but after that once you understand the logic you can simply use the density function and you get the pdf as the output to get the cdf uh, we can use uh, you know like there are many probability uh, plotting formula and many other things are there simply ranking we can do here what we are doing is we are using the library stats from the scientific python by using this so we this is the function is cumulative frequency you can use x and you can see how many bin we need so i have defined 10 bin typically 5 6 7 10 15 depends you know how much data you have more the data you have you can go for higher number of bin otherwise 7 to 10 bin size is good enough and you can plot the cdf we know in cdf it will be you know always uh, it's monotonically increasing so it can increase or it can remain constant if there is no uh, data coming in between so it's slowly increasing so we know you know there is data in, in each of the different ranges. wherever we have zero data in the range it will remain constant so i am not able to see any constant so we have data for you know uh, uh, all the bin size we have data in this category to make the bar chart we are making some adjustment you know so that it uh, lies from the lower uh, size to the higher size okay all those changes we are making you can see in this uh, cumulative count we are putting and then you can see you know how we have plotted it's not a big deal you try it any difficulty you know you can uh, comment it and then we can sort it out so here when we use simply cumulative frequency sometimes you may see you know certain jerk is there some data was not there so those kind of behavior you can see so very you know in easy way of solving this problem is we can use some kernel based distribution so we are using a library called stats model and it has you know sub library called distribution then empirical distribution from which we are importing ecdf so we are not importing the entire library because we need only one function so we use the ecdf so it's very simple to use you can define your data inside it 
and it gives you x and y which we can plot and we can see it we use a step function because you know the cdf here is defined for the range it's not you know at the single point so you can see the uh, ecdf this is the empirical data we are getting in this and you can use this function let's say you want to compute the value of cdf so you can take what is the value for 0 5 10 or any number and you get the output we can also use like i was telling you know uh, you see there are lots of this is not a looking very smooth and nice behavior so we can use some kernel based distribution okay where which gives it does not take only individual density it gives some weightage and gives you much more smoother uh, uh, the P, uh, you know the pdf and cdf you can fit a theoretical distribution if you know which kind of distribution you, you fit but if, when we are you know running a large large number of uh, data size we'll have to manually see how much accuracy it's coming how good is the fit bad is the fit so it become it may become complicated you can you know use uh, uh, empirical cdf with kernel distribution and you you get a you know very nice uh, smooth cdf so we are using stats models uh, you know sub library api and we are calling it sm and we are fitting a non parametric distribution so non parametric in statistics means it does not means there are no parameter it means we are not assuming what kind of distribution it follow so your data may follow uniform distribution it may follow normal distribution it not not to follow any distribution you can fit the uh, you know non parametric uh, approach you can follow and you get the cdf so this is how we are following this uh, kernel density based approach to fit our cdf typically it's good to for kernel based approach or a theoretical distribution to get much more smoother data otherwise what happens if for any region let's say you know you are fitting normal uh, you have your data and let's say if you take the case of rainfall by chance there was no rainfall between let's say 2 to 5 mm then whatever ensemble you produce whatever you do it will not take any rainfall between 2 and 5 mm in reality it's you know very uh, less likely to happen that in one particular range there is no data so it makes much more sense to go for the kernel based approach or theoretical distribution than simply taking the raw data thank you then we'll meet in the next session of the statistics Sometimes you know I try to go a little fast because everything is written in the book. So you go through the book, and I am trying to explain in a, you know a simple and faster way than the other you know repeating whatever I have already written. But any question you have, you can put in the comment, and then I'll go through it and try to reply. Thank you.